Open water with sharks in it, he gon' swim back. Ain't stopping down the cool line. For that money respect, I'm more than willing to shoot you line. Are, you have been, been. you will be under the pool. Double up two times. Cool with rules, young hoes, you fly shit. Stash box, pop it, place in the cockpit. Steady mob with no politics in the gossip. It's a group man, brown hair, nigga, watch this. Burn. Trey 4, 7 11, the Deuce and the Nine. This Hoover Hay is for the collective. However, Hoover Knights and culture enthusiasts are more than welcome to sit through what I'm about to discuss. Today, I'm going to talk about getting back to what Under the Groove, the Hoover Story podcast, is about. When it was first conceived, it was decided that its foundation would be predicated on four things the Hoover Story, a cautionary existence, atonement, and the real enemy. They all comprise of one thing, and that's history. The fact of the matter is that Hoover Street, before, during, and after, individuals from the area became these figures, these personalities, and the characters we've come to know, love, hate, and respect. Hoover Street was in its own right a household name before its gang culture gained its fame. This is relevant because history speaks to all things. It speaks about the stories of places and of people intrinsically woven into this patchwork quilt we've pieced together. These places and people are unalterable repositories of history and experiences, not just on Hoover Street with Hoovers, but elsewhere in other places and with others in life. Most of us from there, though, don't discern or let alone can grasp the weight of this history. For some, it's too much to perceive, and for others, too heavy a burden to bear the responsibility of being front and center with this groove, its influence, its leadership, its complexities, and yes, its disappointments. They are all monstrous, and yet there are reasons then to be prudent enough to carry this history on our shoulders when we speak it or share it with others with absolute truth. The dissemination of our origins, history, people, experiences, and stories is a very serious matter. There are aspects of our origins and history that most of us don't know, that some reject, and that others want to hide. This history is significant, so much so that the Library of Congress, yes, your government, houses our history, though not told in our words or stored there with our consent, but it's there right along with all the other sets of Crips and Bloods history in existence. Trust me, it's there for a number of reasons that the majority of us cannot fathom. Mainly though, it's there for them to go and research, understand, and then exploit. Has anyone ever stopped to think, other than those who have recently spoken on it, where Adam-22 came from? Why did he come here? Look at what he's done since he's been here. Who was he really before he popped up out of nowhere with more controversy than the Crips, Bloods, and Hoovers combined? The majority of us have sat idly by and watched this transgression. Some even participate in it, in the name of the bag. The point is that the story of Hoover Street, it exists there. In the Library of Congress, right along with all the other Crip and Blood origins, histories, and stories, some of those stories are individual stories. Some are of groups and some are of communities. The sharing, the dissemination of these origins, histories and experiences is a very serious matter that is being exploited. Consider this, 
there would probably be a movie done about him or someone like him who looks like them getting credit for exploiting our culture like they did or like they do or will do in the near future. Look, there are aspects of our origins and history that most Hoovers don't know or reject outright. We've watched episodes on this platform where founders, OGs, some who've played pivotal roles in establishing, creating, or cementing this get out were minimized and even trivialized. Why was that? This can be traced back to a lack of teaching, learning, and understanding of Hoover that most Hoovers did not receive, or more poignantly, did not give. This is paramount. The withholding of our origins, the negativism of our history from our own, creates this disconnect that resonates now and will continue to resonate with those coming after us later in all segments of the culture if it isn't corrected. Think about that. Who was before anyone else, though, should know without a doubt, without debate, without a sense of unsureness, better than anyone who's who on Hoover Street and who's in Hoover history. There should be a confidence among all Hoovers of one thing, no matter where they are on this planet Earth, that is, knowing our collective history. In order to confront and correct this unfortunate dropping of the proverbial ball, as Michelle, my wife, would put it, <laughs> in the education of our origins and history, the collective need only to assist with laying down of historical facts over the postulation as such. Memories fade with the passage of time. As time continues, we must not fade in it, nor become stagnant as a result of it. If allowed, this juggernaut that stands on this stage set some 52 years ago. Man, look, it will not only be forgotten, negated, and ultimately dismantled, but also discredited by those who most certainly need its discreditization to usher in new narratives and roles for other people in the culture. The Hoover phenomenon is real. Hoovers do not take for granted, man, that our history will always be ours to tell, to share, to spit, to glorify, or to eternalize. History gives us opportunities to learn from the past. It grants an inside look into those experiences that are most provocative and thought-provoking. Our history allows us and others to address viewpoints that are consistent as well as inconsistent in human nature and society. It exposes the cultural, social, economical, intellectual, political growth and progression as part of the human experience. Hoovers have a history that runs deep in many communities, many. There are communities today that would say, oh, that's a rumor about Hoover's involvement over here. Individuals don't want that history to be told, but it will be. It's part of Hoover's history. There are some of our own that refuse to accept nine old Hoover Crips as a part of Hoover's history. Imagine that. We can't allow ourselves or others to disrespect nor disregard any aspect of our history. It does not honor the ones that we love most who are gone. And conversely, nor should we disregard or disrespect the histories of others. We are all intertwined. From Raymond Washington, the creator of the Crips worldwide, to Hoover Joe, the creator of the Hoovers worldwide, respect our histories more than we would our hubris, our pride, because truth be told, history will assign us all to a delineation that matches the illumination we truly emanate from. We must involve ourselves or else we will disappear as others claim and stand not just in our culture, but also in our heritage, in our legacy, and in our place. Trust that. Let's get out of our feelings in order to deal with those issues that need addressing with our undivided attention. Make it make sense, man. Allow the histories to set the standard, or at the very least, provide perspective for structure that is so sorely needed in our communities. Before I close this out, I would like to pay homage to the home queens, the Hooverlets. We know that it isn't said or expressed often enough over the phone, in an email or text, or when we see you from day to day or periodically that we truly love and appreciate you all. 
you are or we are as proud of you as much as we know you are proud of yourselves. And that expression is witnessed in how you all carry yourselves daily like queens. Many of you are still standing and involved with the community and rightly so. So when the words pillars, stump down, frontliners, true hoovers is bandied about, many of us think of y'all. You have always been doers, thinkers, and providers. From OG Strawberry and all those who followed her and all those who followed them, you have remained strong and represented from full trade to the one way. You are home, queens. We love you. None parallel your fervor, your dedication, or determination. Hoover Crips, Hoover Gangster Crips, and Hoover Criminals, as well as others far and wide, respect, love, and appreciate you. Peace and blessings to you all. All right, listen, people. I realize that there will be some who would disagree, and that's fine. A disagreement is nothing but a complaint if one chooses to sit idly by over being actively involved. I say that to say this. Our history is eternal if we make it so. Our unity is destined. Relevant shots out, man. The OG band, Front Hood, Compton Crips, man. All love, bro. Crazy old Raymond Avenue Crips. We love what you're doing, man. We see you, man. We respect you, man. You know, we we with it. Some of us are with it. I'm pretty sure most of us will be with it. The Kitchen Crips, the Five Dudes Broadway Gangster Crips, and the East Coast Crips, man. Do y'all thing, man. Y'all setting the standard, man. We love it. We love how you all have stepped up to unify and cease the black of black, black against black beasts and wars. You know, this is a standard most of us are very eager to be a part of. One love, one respect. To kill a Watt, Harlem Crips, Rolling Thirties, I love you, bro. All love. Lil Spike, A Trey Gangster, all love, bro, and respect. That's true. China Man, Lamb Deuce, Hoover, hey, keep doing your thing, man. Love how you doing it, man. Do it like that, man. Special shout out, man, to T Bird, Nine Deuce Hoover. A lot of this shit, man, wouldn't even be possible, man. You know what I'm saying? If it wasn't for your involvement, man. You know? Your frontline dude, man, in all things, man. So keep being you, man. And keep, man, bridging these gaps, man. We need that. And any of y'all out there like that, man, step up, man. Speak up. Some real shit, all right? You know, so hey, let it do what it do. To the culture enthusiasts, the Hoover Knights and the Collective, what's under your groove? Don't neglect to like, share, follow, comment, and mostly, most definitely, subscribe. Go check out our merch store, man, at shop at underthegroove.com. You are, you have been, and you will be under the groove. Peace. Trade folks, 7-Eleven, the deuce of the night. You have been, you will be under the groove. But we ain't game banging. This is about education. We're trying to educate our youth right now, nigga. Hey. Said day is the best day to skip walking across the floor in the best way. From train to the one way, it's a stump day. LA to the NY, let the stump You know, back in them days, it was love, loyalty, respect, and honesty. That's my nigga Gumby right there. Nowadays, you know, ex busters, hooks, and snitches put on pedestals and bitter rings. Say loans on that Uber shit. HIP, Tommy Moon, one of the hardest. Poets I ever heard connected with this star shit. Hey. Baby Jap and Jap 5, quick to set it off on the mic in the shack live. When the shit get real and feel, cause it will, and then you'll see a lot of niggas sitting up in the motherfucker, looking at that light sin, that death sin, then they run into a witness staff, yelling on their own homeboys. Yeah. Hoover Stump, all night. Hoover Stump, all night. I know somebody know how to start them be ass folks on the table for them. Yeah. I'm a New York nigga in the Pacific Sun. I say West Side Hoover if you ask where I'm from. Find this California brunch, then fuse my lungs. It's all about my bread. I ain't leaving the gun. I might get What's your end game? What's your purpose? I keep one in the head or I don't need a gun. I'm with Hawk on Hoover Street with a low ass drum. I'm a damn figure bar with a whole still in cut. You have been. Moving like this, come second to none. Moving like Scotty Young, moving like Booker Bone. I'm bad to the bone.